Zero. I even offer unlimited home phone service for just $20 per month. Just call me, your mobile Verizon rep, at 352-528-0020. Ocala's Information Station, minutes after nine o'clock it is time for in the garden with carol ann carol ann baldwin is in the studio and your questions and your comments are an important part of this show it's a full hour show and so feel free to call at any time whether you're changing the subject or sticking on topic the number is 622-9622 carol ann is a master gardener she'll be uh, glad to address your questions and concerns maybe something about the cold something, yeah I, I don't know did it actually get the freezing good morning caroline good morning larry um it may have been some low-lying areas i think when i got up this morning it was about 35 i think is what weather channel said yeah, but yeah, yeah. um yeah there's probably some areas that had some frost i've seen a little bit of cold damage on some of that tender tropical kind of things that are out in the open right, uh, right. went by some bananas that were out you know at the ag center those ones you can tell already that they they take on that hue that yeah they're a little bit burnt they, yeah, they yeah, may pop yeah. back up a little bit but it's um it wasn't a hard freeze it was uh, and it wasn't long not really it, I, I don't know how long it really was because we usually get that early morning where it actually gets colder before it gets warmer it gets a little further drop and then it begins to warm up um and that's usually as the sun's coming up so you might think that oh okay overnight it was only 35 degrees but by the time you got up at six o'clock in the morning it actually had dropped to 32 and then began to warm from there um i don't it certain areas probably did get down to 32 overnight um here in, in you know in o ocala itself um and then and the nearby areas probably not just um the amount of concrete asphalt things like that do c kind of a make a microclimate same way with subdivisions if the homes are close together again they they hold heat as well as if they're not well insulated they also release a little bit of heat but um those things you know going in i don't think we had a whole lot of damage we're winter's finally here i, I guess is the the biggest thing to say is okay we hit the 21st of december we had and which was the first day of winter Christmas Day, we're sitting around in shirt sleeves right, and, right, and, right, right, right. and flip-flops, and first of the year happened and says, hey, you guys thought you got away with not having winter? Here I am. Because it looks like we had last week, we, where we, not real bad, right, had right, a few right, warm right, days right. Uh, near the end of the week. This week, we're cold again, looking at a 15-day forecast. It looks like we're, we're running right about these temperatures, just sitting there going to float along with the, with the lows in the mid 30s to low 40s and the highs in the 60s right, right, right. yeah so if you can get out of the wind and you have highs in the 60s that's not too bad really so i have a question for you yeah. you, you mentioned the low lying areas mm -hmm. okay low lying areas in, in our community could we could be 40 feet above sea level i remember this conversation right. with uh somebody yeah. I, don't, I remember where it came from i almost had the name in my mind but, right. I, but, but, anyway, <laughs> Just, yeah. but anyway so 40 feet above sea level right 
is that close enough to salt water? That I mean, are, is there actually salt water at forty feet below us? Is um, I, I mean, this, I, this far in, I'm I'm not really sure. I know there there has been concern of salt water intrusion into like the aquifer, but to but does that know, play that, a role in what you're going to decide to plant? I guess is uh, not here in Central no. Florida. Not normally. No, yeah, that's usually when you're looking at the salt thing. That's coastal. That's from the air where it blows across into uh, your yard directly. You know, if you live on the beach or if, even if you live a mile or so in, uh, you still get some salt air intrusion on that, especially on a windy day, right. stormy days, things like that. When we have a tropical storm, we have, you know, hurricanes, things like that, that will blow that, that salt air in further. But a lot of times that's also mixed with, just regular rainwater so it dilutes it you know quite a bit but those uh those coastal areas that they you know their plantings have to be salt tolerant and many times when you're looking for plants to make your selections depending on where you're living you're that's what you're looking for as well as what kind of light it's in what kind of water it needs is also its salt tolerance <coughs> Got a tickle suddenly. <clears throat> well, we have uh, we have um, seagulls here in the parking yeah. lot at the mall. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's because of the cold or why. No. Well, I think they might have come in because there's easy food stores from food sources from. But there's not you know. usually seagulls out there, or did I just never notice them before? I noticed. Them like I think the, there this happens week. to be quite a bit of crowd of them. There was also a bunch of. Them. I saw someone had sent a photograph towards Facebook um, with them all over at the landfill. Also. So it could be a migratory thing. Huh. I'm not real. I'm not real up on my birds. If somebody knows more about you know the uh -huh, birds uh -huh. and the the way they all cycle through, but you know, it, you know, even when I lived up north, I just wondered if suddenly it was you saw called. the seagulls in the mall like, parking lots at different times of year. Okay, for example, we were at um, Silver Springs this past weekend. We right. Rob and I walked three of the trails, mm. and we were hoping we'd see monkeys. One of the mm -hmm. trails we walked was the old jeep safari trail nice and back in the day when you would take the jeep safari you would see monkeys right so we didn't see any no. so it was i asked cold. I, well that's what the guy said yeah he said they go deeper in the woods when it's cold right and i said is it warmer deeper in the woods and he said yeah well it's protected from the wind so, um, i mean and, you wouldn't and think it wouldn't be that much warmer to me not to <laughs> us but yeah it, it's the same thing with fish i mean the fish will go to deep pockets in the water you know it's and, just you a know, little bit warmer water, huh? just a little bit warmer a little more comfortable and they probably also when it comes to the monkeys gather together yeah, you know, and yeah, and yeah. and share you know share the body heat in order to to stay warm, um, and if you've got more foliage around versus you know out with the water with it open, the air comes through, um, transpiration you know or well which is mostly moisture, but you know radiation you know with with an open uh, an open area, that's why we get cold colder on a clear night than we do on a cloudy night is because that heat radiates away uh -huh. from the surface and the same kind of thing uh -huh. um but it is you know when you go through by the springs and stuff on these cold mornings and you see the steam rising off of it realizing it's warmer in that water than it is outside and if that's yeah. happening someplace where it's likely to snow that's really then they pretty, get more snow yeah, right right that's what they say um oh what would the trans if, if the water was hot before the cold weather moved in, then then that cold weather causes all that steam and that becomes snow. I don't know about I that. I saw that on the Weather Channel. Oh, maybe I don't. They know. were explaining how glo <laughs> well they were. And, and again, I don't. I'm not trying right. to be political here, but they were trying to make a case for global warming. Oh, saying that global warming actually is contributing to more snow. Well, and that's well because they keep calling it by the wrong name. That the Earth has gone through climatic changes from. Um, since it's beginning. Since beginning and so that's what contributes to more I'm snow i'm gonna take a phone snow. call and i think i'll take my coat off it's okay <laughs> are you finally getting warm enough to take your oh coat I'm, off? I'm comfy <laughs> yeah yeah uh oh hold on i guess i didn't answer it i thought i did oops good morning you're on the air with carol ann yeah good morning guys morning see so you're talking about the monkeys i've got an interesting article i took out of the paper uh, about a month ago about the monkeys over at Silver Springs. It, it's kind of interesting. Uh, they were brought in in 1930 by a, a guy that owned a, a riverboat uh, cruise uh, thing, and he wanted for tourism to be able to see monkeys on the, on the tour route to make it look more interesting. And uh, by uh, 1963, the population grew to 78, but uh, they were having trouble with the monkeys getting outside the area, and they, they brought a trapper in with a permit 
and he captured and removed 772 monkeys from the park in 1990, between 1998 and 2012. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I know. And, the, and the bad <clears throat> thing about that is those monkeys were were were, were taken to uh, research labs for to, to be researched on. So there was a lot of a protest about that, and then uh, that has since stopped. So as of now, really, it kind of stands status quo as far as uh, what's going to happen with the monkeys over there. But it's it's amazing how they. Uh, they multiply it by themselves in a cooler climate. Right, right. And it's um, it's food supply is a lot of that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Let me let me take a little break. We can continue this on the other side. This is WOCA O'Connor. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Pretty nice day today on the cool side. Sunshine and some clouds. Highs in the upper 50s to mid-60s around the area. And partly cloudy and chilly tonight. A low of 34 well inland, 44 at the coast. For tomorrow, mostly sunny, cool day with a high of 60 to 64. Thursday becoming mostly cloudy, high 66 to 70. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. We all know the importance of good health, but we may not know the latest advances in medicine that are available to us. Monday at 9 a.m., Bern Paraiso will be our roving medical reporter to tell us about Seven Hill Gastroenterology PA and Dr. Reddy. We'll discuss screening, techniques, and more. So tune in and listen. This is more than news you can use. It's news that could save your life. That's Monday at 9.05 a.m. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. What makes male shopaholics harder to spot is how they view shopping in general. Because where women tend to treat shopping as a chance to be social, guys often view shopping as a competition. The fastest way to lose weight is to avoid all meat and dairy products. Whether your partner shaved a few points off his golf score or she got a promotion at work, the way you react is even more important than how you react during a crisis. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Don't get caught without your daily source of senior deals. Pick up your copy of the Senior Voice newspaper. It's your source for schedule and events tailored to seniors with information you need, like a list of free events in the area. We even have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company to you that fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about them. For more information, call Tom's Picks, 352-804-1223. And pick up your copy of The Senior's Voice at most any business up and down the 200 corridor. Now read Ocala downtown newspaper online. He's back. That's right. Bob Kennedy with Berkshire Hathaway Home Team Realty begins his new series of real estate programs Friday, January 15th. We'll be discussing the latest news in real estate, trends, financing, you name it. This is an interactive program, so of course, your questions and concerns will be answered. Remember, the first program will be Friday, January 15th at 9.30 a.m. Right here on The Source, WOCA 96.3 FM and 13.70 a.m. This is WOCA News Talk 1370. This is James Snyder inviting you to join me each Sunday morning at 9.30 for Sunday Joy on 1370 AM, 96.3 FM. All right, 18 minutes after 9 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. The phone lines are open if you want to call at any point during the show. It does not have to be on topic. You can change the topic, well, as long as it's garden-related. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the number is 622-9622. Caroline Baldwin is your host, and uh, welcome back. Yep. And and just a, just a quick thing on, on uh, Hughes' deal on, on the monkeys. I, I know that there had been the, the big controversy. They were trying to eliminate them, and, and I guess I, I had forgotten that some had gone to research but we're not going to get into that but they also had the big problem that the monkeys were um i believe carrying hepatitis and that was one reason why they needed to get that population down is because they were actually a threat to the visitors oh really you know that if they got excited or whatever and and hopped on and and bit someone or scratched someone you've got a problem and so that was one reason to reduce the population that and they probably knew that silver springs at that time even was was going through some transitions and um i know they were trying to figure out how to just um you know spay or neuter them and re-release some of them or you know do a hmm. birth control so that they would stop reproducing and then just natural selection would eliminate the rest of them 
but I don't, you know, and that's possibly what they're still going with now. I don't know. Huh. I don't know how that's going. I don't know. I know the but, people on kayaks that we met said they did see them. Right, they, they said, right. In fact, they saw 30 babies is what one guy said. Wow, so, wow. I don't know. That's quite a, that's quite a uh, healthy uh, repopulation, yeah, yeah. you know, on, on something like that. So hopefully they're doing okay and that it's not an issue that they're There was one in town that was killed uh, by a car here on 200, just, out, yeah. just outside the mall. And, right. Uh, do you remember that? A couple I, weeks yeah, ago? I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was kind of strange. Kind of weird. It, huh? Yeah, but um, last week we had a caller who had a problem with his yellow striped bamboo, and last yesterday I found an I found an article I, and it was on IFAS on the Solutions for Your Life site, and I cannot find the actual paper, so I can't reference you the actual <laughs> one that I that I got it from. But it sounded like what he was having the biggest. Bamboo doesn't have a bit, whole bunch of different issues. You know, if you keep it flooded for too long, yes, it'll get a root rot. But bamboo likes water, so it really would have to be staying submerged or having possibly <clears throat> an irrigation pipe broken underneath it and, and giving too much water. But there's a me- there's mealy bugs that can be sucking the life out of them, and you may need to actually get down inside those clumps. So if you've if he's listening, if he's got the bamboo, if any, if it's still alive, he may just go through and and treat it for the mealy bugs. And this time of year, using an oil would not be detrimental because it's not so hot out. I would still be careful with the sun shining on it if it's in a bright, you know, real sunny area of using it late in the afternoon instead spraying the area around the ground around it as well as down inside those clumps because that's where those bugs will be they may not be up here on the tops like any unless you're unless you're tuned in live stream you can't see my (laughs) hand gestures um they're down into that center clump more than up higher where you can actually see them so you really have to spray heavily down into the middle of the the plant area so if he's had the problem with the bamboo if that hopefully that'll help the phone number is 622-9622 if you want to call and ask a question. So the one real thing, quick thing yeah. I, I wanted to mention is in Publix right. l- yesterday or whatever, uh, there were some ladies, Robin was one of them, that right. were admiring this plant called a, what I call it, a French, French lavender. Lavender. Right. And to me, it was just green. There was no was, flower on it, but right. they said it smelled really very, good. Yeah, very, real lavender They were on sale at Publix. So my question is, obviously a, a grocery store in Florida would sell plants this time of year. Right. You wouldn't see that in most other states, I'm guessing. Maybe Hawaii. Or uh, well, in the grocery store you might really? because it would be something you would keep inside because most lavenders don't like florida anyway so it's one of those things you might keep it in a pot it's oh, really? going to make the house smell nice you figure if it's a fragrance well, apparently that was one, the, the uh, yeah and that's the, that's the whole idea uh, appeal of this yeah. particular flower yeah. is that mo- a lot of people do like to grow lavender unfortunately lavenders just have a a hard time um especially once we hit the summer months. You can grow them for a while in the springtime and then again in the early fall when our rains aren't you know, going on and the humidity is not at you know, 95%. So you know, that would be something that you'd probably just put into a nice pot, have it there. It's going to be fragrant in the house, um, and that's what, you're, you know, that's what you're looking for. And that's another good reason to bring plants in the house is that they smell good. You know, it's not all visual. Um, you can tuck that one in behind some other things that right. might be prettier, but still have a nice fragrance. Right. But, yeah. And you're saying, you know, that the uh, other garden centers or nurseries or other states, no, no, they're in the close. Um, you know, in the in the winter months, I was actually, uh, I think it was last year, I had a lady looking for um, geraniums in the summertime and i had says no and i jokingly told her i says well you should have brought yourself one down from up north as we won't have them until fall and winter when the rains begin to stop and she looked at me and just with everything and and i was almost devastated because Uh. our garden centers are already closed and i went really really and it was about august i want to say and it's because they were they were already thinning out their plants. They were done their planting season. You're enjoying what you right, have planted right, right, right. as as the fall is getting ready to progress in. And so it was like I was just so amazed. I guess because when I grew up, I grew up up north. 
but I left there when I was young. Uh -huh, I, was, uh -huh. I was 16 when right, I left right, right. left up there, so I didn't pay attention to those kind of things yet. Right. I had I wasn't into all the plants as much as I am today. So it, it is one of those things. So I feel sorry for those who live up north and have to. You get to come down here and enjoy all of our, our flowers and you know year-round gardening capabilities. Um, so you know, do enjoy them. <clears throat> and, so, and since the holidays to dictate certain flowers, uh, right. I guess, or certain plants. I mean, Valentine's Day is just a few weeks away, mm -hmm. and uh, and the stores are all geared up for that. But I right. don't. Is there a particular flower oh, except for the roses? Roses. roses yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people just don't plant red and white you know, a red and pink yeah. flowers for that, where uh, there's cyclamen, which is more of a, a have a house plant for us. Uh, you know, there's some garden centers, just um, mostly roses everybody thinks of, you know, or the rose yeah. carnation mixes yeah. and things like that, but not really a so much um, landscape plants, but the cut flower industry and, of course, the chocolate industry. So, actually, if you could plant somebody some cocoa and they could have their own chocolate. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 had, we had these guys, uh, not, we didn't have them on, but we were right. talking about these two guys that make chocolate candy bars yeah. from the bean. They they, right. they, they do the they whole, do the whole they, they do it like they did in the in the 18th century, the 1700s. Wow. Yeah. wow. That's, that's, I bet they're expensive candy I mean, bars. What does that take? I mean, a hammer? Would you go crush the beans, no, add the I sugar? Don't, yeah, I don't know. No, it's actually separated alkaline. Yeah, if you ever read a chocolate candy bar. I wonder bar, how they do it. The, the, it's all, you know, uh, like a lie. But that's their that sales they, pitch. It, like, right, is that it's, it's old-fashioned Galen was chocolate. saying, is it better than the way we do it now? And I don't, I don't even know if it I tastes better. I have no idea. I have hmm. no idea. I bet it's more expensive. I bet it but is, But then again, you can get, you know, we're so... We're so our palates are so blah with a Hershey, you know, no, no, nothing bad about a Hershey chocolate bar, <laughs> but it's so run of the mill, you know, it's kind so of thing. It. It's so common that the expensive or the higher uh, cocoa contented chocolates, yeah, yeah. most people don't like, you know, those that are 65 and 75 percent cocoa really? in it, you know, where it's not as sweet or you need to eat it with the something else, the real dark chocolates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're good, but they are hard to eat. <laughs> I, I like them, but, you know, yeah. small quantities. Or that quantity. baker's chocolate, you can't oh, eat you that. Oh, you can't eat baker's no, chocolate. That's awful. No, but, but, but you're using it in another fashion. Yeah. No, though it has nothing to do with plants. Um, yes, it does. It's a bean. It is a bean. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a legume. It is a, it's, it is a plant. It does come from a plant, so you can actually call your Hershey's bar a salad. <laughs> <laughs> um, today I went by the Ag Center, and this isn't something you can pick up, but you might be able to... I don't know whether or not they would email you somehow or another. One of the master gardeners came up with this wonderful... Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the word to, to use, but it's on turf fertilizer basics. And she did such a wonderful job on it. Thank you, Linda, Linda Krausnick. She did a great job of going through and taking the macronutrients and what are the macronutrients and what do they do and the secondary nutrients, why they're important, you know, because of our soils and some of the micronutrients. And this is what you need to do when you're looking. And this is for turf. These are turf fertilizer basics. But you can take this into your regular landscaping fertilizers also, uh -huh. uh, taking into account that your landscaping fertilizers would have some phosphorus in it where your lawn fertilizers won't. And it's a two-sided item, but they've uh, – and it even lists the – Marion County Ordinance for Florida Friendly Fertilizer Use on uh, Urban Landscapes on how much nitrogen or at readily available nitrogen per thousand square feet is available, how to read a, a fertilizer label to see what you're looking for um, in your bag of fertilizer, how to calculate how much fertilizer to put down on your yard, and um, about 10 tips of remember when fertilizing your lawn that you know University of Florida recommends zero uh, phosphorus that your fertilizer should contain both soluble and insoluble nitrogen don't you don't apply fertilizer unless your turf is actively growing that's why we say in the winter months it's though this year we were warm we don't put fertilizer down now it's not actively growing it's mm -hmm. not going to take it up and and a few other things there so it's it's something great if you want to um 
if you're on their their email i don't know if they'll email something like that out to somebody but you can you know you can check with them it's a great great deal we are up to the bottom of the hour break, so we'll take that break and be right back. Remember, your phone calls are invited if you want to call Carol Ann during the show, whether it's to say hi or to say, how do I plant this tree or how, <laughs> what, what do I do about my frozen banana plant? I wonder, <laughs> I wonder how mine fared after last night. I, bet you yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're, 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 they're going to be okay. Yeah? They'll, they'll, they'll survive it. So we'll take a little break and be right back. We've got a full half hour left of the show in the garden with Carol Ann. 622-9622 if you want to call. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. A suicide bomber hitting part of Turkey popular with foreigners. Istanbul's Sultan Ahmet district. Witnesses say the blast at a landmark near the historic Blue Mosque could be heard in several neighborhoods. President Tayyip Erdogan says both Turks and foreigners are among the dead. Fox Radio's Jessica Gallagher. ISIS is being blamed on dual suicide bombings in Ankara in October that killed more than 100. Former Afghan Taliban Captain Bill Bergdahl is expected to appear in a military court for a pre-trial hearing. He was held by the Taliban for five years and faces charges of desertion and misbehavior before the enemy. After walking away from his outpost in Afghanistan, he was freed in a prisoner swap. And the current estimate for tomorrow night's Powerball jackpot drawing, $1.4 billion. Fox News, we report, you decide. They were a marching band with a plan to steal their rival mascot's costume. Stealth would be critical. I said stealth was critical. They searched each room until there it was, the precious mascot in a glass case. They ran toward the exit when suddenly the theft was covered thanks to a farmer's agent. Marching Bandits, May 4th, 2015. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Not many people like to shave. No matter how much you pay for a razor with multiple blades or fancy handles, you still get nicks, cuts, and razor burn. Shave Secret is a shaving oil that can completely replace any shaving cream and pre-shave treatment you've ever used. Do yourself and your skin a favor. Minimize the nicks, cuts, burns, and bumps and try Shave Secret for the best shave you've ever had. Shave Secret is available at Walmart Supercenters, the Navy Exchange, online at shavesecret.com and amazon.com. You've got a garden and we've got a show for you called You've Got a Garden with your host, Master Gardener Carol Ann Baldwin. Carol Ann answers your questions about your flowers, your veggies, your grass, your trees, even questions about your bugs. And she's only on WOCA, so don't miss Carol Ann Baldwin and You've Got a Garden each Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. right here on WOCA The Source. Hey Ocala, this is Kelly Hart, executive editor of Ocala Magazine. Did you know last year Ocala Magazine won more awards and excellence than any other publication in Florida? And this year, Ocala Magazine was named best consumer magazine in the state. Now you can join me every Friday at 10 a.m. on Ocala Magazine Radio, where we bring the pages of Ocala Magazine to life, right here on The Source. Ocala Magazine thanks you for making us number one. And remember, there is only one Ocala Magazine. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. What makes male shopaholics harder to spot is how they view shopping in general. Because where women tend to treat shopping as a chance to be social, guys often view shopping as a competition. The fastest way to lose weight is to avoid all meat and dairy products. Whether your partner shaved a few points off his golf score or she got a promotion at work, the way you react is even more important than how you react during a crisis. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA The Source every night from 2 to 6 a.m. and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara, and me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment right here on WOCA The Source. 
Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that, I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new yep, truck. Yep, we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too. Well, as a matter of fact, join me, Matt Gibbs, from Sunrise Automotive every Tuesday at 10 for auto repair with personal care right here on The Source. Do you have areas that have started sagging or drooping? Is what you're looking at not quite the same as it was years ago? Are there enhancements you've been putting off? Is there serious damage you need fixed? Then call on us, Damage Control Services. When your roof is sagging and the drywall is drooping after a storm, or your home just needs some enhancements from damage repairs to new construction, Damage Control Services is here to help. We are The Source, W-O-C-A. All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock, let's return to Carol Ann Baldwin, and you're in the guard, in the garden with Carol Ann. <laughs> 40, 40, what did I say? It's 42 40, degrees? 42 degrees. Brrr, 42 still, degrees. Still cold, yeah. if you ask me. But, um, yeah, Joe had re- reminded us last, I think last week, we made mention of that Florida's Arbor Day is Friday, January the 15th, and I'm hunting around. I wish someone knew what there was anything going on here but i'm not seeing it we have events for earth fest but that's not till spring uh-huh, uh-huh. but the one he handed me a press release was from actually like wakulla county um members which is up way up near the panhandle actually florida arbor day is friday january 15th florida wild Life Federation is pleased to announce its partnership with the National Wildlife Federation to bring more tree planting events to Florida. The first event is Saturday, uh, this coming Saturday, I guess in Crawford, uh, which is a small town south of Tallahassee. Uh, it's, it's a real small town as far as I know. Um, and so they're going to be, there's, uh, be planting all kinds of tree giveaways. The organization has got a, a mix of red buds, river birds, southern red oak, and bald cypress. But unfortunately, at the moment, I'm not seeing anything of where, if they, we usually end up with something as a pretty nice event down here, but I'm searching online and I'm not finding anything for our area. Um, if anybody's, familiar with the organization maybe they know and can let us you know yeah. let us know where somebody can you know sometimes it's freebie trees uh or even go help plant to, go plant a tree kind of day yeah the old john and denver campaign remember yeah. that yeah. you do have a phone call good morning right. you're on the air with carol ann good morning this is ava how everybody's doing real good how are you good uh i'm trying right now and i'm listening to you guys and i really need a rescue for my plants i bought okay. those plants you cast especially and other palm trees um, at Lowe's okay. a weeks ago. And I don't know what's going on with them, but um, one after another one after another one, they have those black, tiny flies. Ah. Uh. thousands of them. And they sit in the ground, like in the soil. Uh-huh. I thought these are the rabbits, but they are not because they are, they, they are not white. Right. They're, they're probably and flying a little bit when you... They fly, they fly, yeah. they are everywhere. They are on the, on the wall, on the, you know, oh, on gosh. the tiles, on the floor tiles. And I try to freeze them sometimes, like outside. I put those, you know, four plants outside. Right now they are freezing. Right. So I don't know what to do with them. What am I doing wrong? Should I? It it, it sounds like, or? yeah, it, it sounds like there may be a fungus gnat. That's actually flying off of those. Um, you're going to need to, unfortunately, I always hate to tell people that they really need to spray their house plants, but that's going to be probably your best bet. Um, did you transplant them out of the little pots that they came in? And, and Yes. yes. And, and I I, I, some of them I just put in a, in a sand, you know, like I took the, the sand from my garden. Uh-huh. Because I thought maybe the soil was already sick when I bought it. Right. So I put them in a, um, one of them I put in a sand, which is actually maybe working. There's nothing in it. Right, um, right, so yeah. I would, I would probably, sitting in the soil. Mm-hmm. I would probably have started just with a fresh potting soil. Mm-hmm. Than anything from out in the yard, because out in the yard you don't know what you're bringing in. Yeah. When it comes, and I bought, and, and then I bought a new, a new soil which is for the citrus plant. So okay. Maybe it, 
still maybe left something sitting in it. Um, it, there shouldn't be, there shouldn't have been anything in there. It could be that they came in on the other, because of course we always leave soil on when we, when we repot them. It could be that it did come on the, on the plant. I would, I would spray them, um, and I would, I would use an actual, you know, uh, if you don't want to use something that is a, a synthetic or a chemical, mm -hmm. mix up your dish soap and, and water. But you're spraying the you're spraying the soil. It's only those dish soap and water kind of things are only gonna kill what it touches. It's not mm -hmm. going to have much of any residual. And then you know, and, and you don't want to constantly spray that either. But if you get just a simple. Um, basic pesticide that's labeled for use on your little ornamental plants read the direction most of them you will need to take them outside to spray them mm -hmm. because they have an odor or they may leave a residue that you wouldn't want on your furniture or in your house spraying oh, yeah, the spraying the soil surface as well as the plant thoroughly mm -hmm. you don't necessarily need to drown them but you will you know spray that soil surface let that dry and then bring them back in the house oh my goodness Okay, I will try that then. <laughs> okay, yeah. Some, right, thank you. You're welcome. Sometimes that does happen. It's something you don't see or don't, you know, it's not yeah, visible yeah. when you when you make a, a purchase. Um, and they, they come in, the you bring the plant in the house, it's nice and warm in the house, and boom, next thing you know, here comes, here's a, here's a bit of a pest issue. It's amazing uh, how they can stay dormant for so long. Oh, right? it's... Uh, just just start reading on how uh, different insects can sit there. Well, you think the the thirteen year cicada, uh, wow, frog yeah amazing? frog eggs when a pond dries up, the frog eggs are still there. Once the pond refills with water, boom, the eggs hatch. Isn't that amazing? The frogs you know come it's back. Amazing. So. Yeah. Um, it's, sometimes it's just temperature. A lot of times people will bring their house plants in because of the winter time, and next thing you know, you've got an explosion of Japanese lady ladybugs all in the house, and everybody's going, "Ooh, what can I do?" You yeah, know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm told that ladybugs are beneficial. The Japanese ladybugs are uh, an exotic species for oh, really? us. Do they look yeah. different than the ones we know? Um, I, I guess actually they, you don't look at them. <laughs> they're not totally different looking. But yes, they are a little bit different than some of the ones. But if they're in your house the, the red, and they're the doing red, the red, little red bugs with, with, with the little dots. beetles with the dots on them. <laughs> um, but the Japanese look different. I, I There's so many different varieties okay. of them. But the ones usually that will hatch out in our house are the ones that are an exotic okay not the ones that are the native ones and if you should you have a, a, a hatching of a population of those you don't want to squish them and you know apparently you know they will um, their excrement on the walls will you know is going to make, leave a mark you might get your dust buster or your vacuum cleaner vacuum them up don't feel guilty that you're killing some you know, they really didn't belong here in the first place. Just, <laughs> but don't, you know, don't want to screw you know, vacuum. That's the only way you're going to get them out of there, really. Good timing for that guy with the blow thing, huh? So yeah. It sounds sound like we had sound effects so going. We can say, yeah, <laughs> we got the vacuum running, cleaning up all the ladybugs. But those kind of things will happen in... Um, you know, occasionally we, we have our plants outside all, you know, all summer long. Most, you know, nine or ten months out of the year, we need to bring them in for a few months. That um, sometimes, and I, and I know I've done it, is, is when I don't do it, suddenly going, oh, wow, I need to bring the plants in tonight. Uh, if I make the arrangements in advance, maybe a couple weeks in advance, I'll actually treat them, treat that soil a little bit, spraying the top, right, so that right. anything that might could be in there, ants, uh, aphids, you know, any you know that are overwintering in there. I'm not going to bring in my house and then yeah, have a problem with point. them. Yeah, you know, yeah. So those different things because I know I'm sure a bunch of us brought in our, especially the small potted ones, brought them in or tucked them up close in the porch because that cold weather. Remember how that uh, that pepperonia behind you yes. was so damaged in the cold weather mm -hmm. that year? Of course, I was the guilty party. Well, that's all right. Uh, but look how but nice it's, it's, it's doing gorgeous. now. It's gorgeous. It's a it's a gorgeous plant now. It just as happy as can be. It's been here a long time. It sure has. Yeah. It has been through two studios and how many hosts? <laughs> well, just two hosts. <laughs> two just, hosts, two studios. Just us. Yeah. I mean, you were here and, yeah, I, and, and Rob and I were yeah, here. So. Yeah. so that was. Uh, that was from Kenny's place, yeah. I believe. Yeah, I think so. That's right, what yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, I think so. 
But that's a you know it's a great great little plant there, and it looks very happy nowadays. Hardy, it's a hardy plant. It is definitely a hardy. Um, it would probably be one I would almost rate up there with like a plants of steel. If you've got somebody <laughs> who you know you're not a, a plant, plant person, steel. but you want some plants in the house because you maybe that's why they gave it to me. Could be, could be. They knew. They they knew that it would get well, and and in an office environment or in a home, if you're not a plant person, but you you are trying to bring in to improve air quality in the house, it's a good plant to do that. You know, here it is. We we know obviously, it can withstand neglect the and abuse. The air quality is improved, and, huh? Yeah. Well, it, it, of course in it does. In what way? It, it plants purify the air. They well, take it take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. Do you remember the garden in the Cascades? I mean, the indoor garden, not the outdoor one, but the indoor one down by the vet's office. That always no. made that whole hallway smell so good. It probably oh, still does. Yeah, yeah. It probably still does. You don't remember, yeah, do you? I, I'm trying to. The it, was, it was about the size of one unit, like like this room oh, right okay. here. It was about the size of it, yeah, but I'm it was sure open. If I ever, yeah. Oh gosh, you got to go in there one day. I probably. We'll be right back. Yep. The weather is brought to you by myfwc.com. Safe boating is no accident. Pretty nice day today on the cool side. Sunshine and some clouds. Highs in the upper 50s to mid 60s around the area. Partly cloudy and chilly tonight, a low of 34 well inland, 44 at the coast. For tomorrow, a mostly sunny, cool day with a high of 60 to 64. Thursday becoming mostly cloudy, high 66 to 70. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. Weekends are getting a little retooled. I swear to God, not making a joke. Check this out. New shows? Check. We are Mark Mark. Some new talent? Check. Let's welcome the guys. Let's get it going. Arnie Spanier. Unbelievable. TJ Reeves. This is what you get. Z-Rock. Your weekends are on fire. Because that's how exotic it is. We are Mark Mark. Hospice of Marion County has an urgent need for volunteers to share a conversation with someone, run errands, hold someone's hand. All you need is a willingness to help others. Our volunteers believe the blessings they receive far exceed the services they offer. Will you consider serving, caring, and making a difference? Call today, 873-7441. Hospice of Marion County, making more moments of life possible. What are the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking? Will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Pozenet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch Planning for a Better and Safer Retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, The Source, 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. All right, 12 minutes before 10 o'clock. The phone lines are open if you want to call Carol Ann Bolden. Let's return to In the Garden with Carol Ann. And uh, just, oh, during the break, we heard a little bit about Joe's shrubs. And, right. and you're going to a tropical plant thing in, in Fort Lauderdale? Yeah, next week. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Is it a learning thing, a buying it's, thing? Well, I mean, it's it's the industry. It's one of the industry expos. And... Um, friend of mine she's former former master gardener but friend you know friend of mine she goes down and has for years and you know participates with a with a nursery that she's friends with giving them a hand and has always posted these wonderful pictures to facebook and i sit there going i'm so jealous i want you know i want to go saying this once yeah. before and yeah so yeah. because in in the early fall you get down to orlando to the finance one and that's i mean that's 
it's a nice one but it's it's much more aimed just at the landscapers where this one is the tropical plant industry uh-huh, uh-huh. so it's the big real pretty flashy the orchids and the you know all the the plumerias all the all the real pretty stuff so i'm going so do you go year. with a full wallet do you buy a lot? Um, no, no, no. These, are, I mean, I'm, I'm not. It's I'm a not learning going thing. As, it, for me, it's a learning thing. Mm. It's a pretty thing. Um, you can, as you know, nurseries will buy uh, off of them because all their stuff is. It's, it's making connections for. Um, you know, small garden centers, uh-huh. independent places, nurseries, and things photos? like that. I will. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I, I'm excited. I can't wait. Um, so, and I get, and I'm going to do double duty. I will be visiting with my sister. So, and if it's be. still cold, it might be warmer down there. Oh, and you know, it'll be a little warmer down there. I don't know there. how much, yeah, but at least a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'll feel warmer because of all the pretty flowers. Plus, you're in Fort Lauderdale. In Fort Lauderdale. Which is right. close to Miami. Yeah. Which right. just sounds warmer. Just sounds warmer. Yeah, Fort Lauderdale just sounds warmer. <laughs> <laughs> and it's at the, you know, at the convention center at the Port, Port Everglades. So that's, you know. Do you speak Spanish? Too. You speak no. any Spanish at all? No, I, I can order a beer. How do you order a beer in Spanish? Una cerveza, por favor. <laughs> that's all I know. I didn't know that. <laughs> cerveza means beer? Uh, cerveza? Yeah. Una cerveza, por favor. Yeah. Hmm. One beer, please. That's all I need to know. <laughs> I didn't know, know that. But <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of beer did you just order? It's just a, like just a, a generic beer. beer? Just a beer. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever's there. <laughs> and they point at the ones, I'll point at the I one I want. My, my brother in California knows how to order scrambled eggs in Spanish. Mm. So every time he goes to the Spanish restaurant, he'll, that's the only thing he would order. Cause the only oh, because it's the only thing he knows how to order. Oh, that's not the Can't way you to point do. to the menu? <laughs> right, right. Give me one of these. That looks good. But that's... um. No, a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm I'm excited, and I will. Yeah, I'll post some pictures. Um, going back through on on all of our stuff that we keep going mentioning uh, time after time, the edible landscaping, edible gardening, not edible edible landscaping, edible gardening 101. Um, need to register for this by the 25th of January. Thirty dollars per person, fifty per couple. It is non refundable, but it covers all your materials and light snacks. It is a five day immersion course on on growing edibles in uh ocala marion county central florida all the way from preparing your soil to taking care of the pests and diseases and all of that stuff in between and if you think you've already got all that down pat or you want to get started on some of that and you haven't done a soil test in the area where you're going to plant your vegetables or or your flowers if you're just going to plant some flowers this spring and you've had a uh issue with them not growing properly the ph testing the upcoming date is the 14th of this month so that means that's uh this thursday that they will be doing soil testing if you haven't gathered your soil go around in the area you're only going to need about a quarter to about a quarter of a cup of soil but it needs to be dry 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 drier the better um if your area is say about 100 square foot where you're going to put a vegetable garden in Reach your trowel down in the ground to the bottom. Take a little off. Throw it in a cup. In a, in four or five different areas. Take mix all that up and then measure out the amount you're going to need. Dry it out on paper towels, paper plates, and um, bring it in. They tell you to bring it in in a paper bag uh, because plastic will hold any moisture that's there. And it is a two dollar fee for the soil pH test. And the pH, you know, can can really give you an idea yeah, where you like need to go one way or another. An important piece of information for and it, right. And if you miss that one, they have February the 11th is the second uh, would be the second time to do. So if you've had an issue, long on flower beds, uh, vegetable gardens, you're just not sure you're going to put a garden in and what to do. Um, if you're doing any, before you do any amendments, I would do the testing then and then do your amendments afterwards. If you amended back in the fall, test now and do, you know, then you follow the directions on the amendments that they give you. A good way to go. And of course, the Master Gardener one, and I had the page that had the dates uh for this year's spring festival but it's always that same weekend and i had it and i, <laughs> and, and I think i've taken it out to show somebody else but again it's in march as usual usually that what is it first full weekend or second full 
weekend. I'm looking for my calendar right now to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> because, it, yeah, it's kind of going, okay, I'm telling you to do something. And, uh, yes, the uh, 12th and 13th of March is the Master Gardener Spring Festival. So mark your calendar now and get and be ready to come out and enjoy as it always is a, uh, a good turnout, a good uh, good place to get some um, locally sourced plants that you know are grown by local growers here or are within Florida and some great garden statuaries and things like that. It's all garden related. So make your, mark your calendars now. All right, I have a, a question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find a good question. Trying to find a question. And, and this probably won't take up the rest of the show, so no, well, if you don't mind. But it's, yeah. we have a $20 gift certificate to Bob Wine's Camellia Gardens and Nursery. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh-huh. The question is, and there might be more than one answer. So oh, okay. The, your expertise is going to come in handy here. We'll wing it. Not, not including citrus fruit or the word citrus. Okay. Uh, in other words, I'm looking for the name of a count... Uh, county in florida that is named directly or indirectly after a plant okay so citrus county would be excluded okay. orange county would be excluded. excluded can you name a county in florida that is named after a plant and uh it sounds like it's indirectly and it's from it's based on a, a spanish word so wow <laughs> i i know i i, I know um but anyway, somebody knows this answer yeah, right off the and, top and, of their head. Yeah, and, and we're familiar with the county. It starts with a P. Say, it starts with a P. I'll tell you that. Um, and there's two Spanish words, I guess, that it's derived from. Okay. Does that make sense? And well, let's see. I'm trying to think of how many counties that we have <laughs> in, in in Florida that begin with P. And I'm off the top of my head, I only know of G. Two. So, so if you call, you got a 50 50 chance. Six two two nine. No, you have 100 percent because we get you. The, we'll let you yeah, answer we'll twice. <laughs> so six two two nine six two two is the uh, number to call to answer the question. If you answer it correctly, you'll get the twenty dollar gift certificate to Bob Wine's Camellia Gardens and Nursery. I just wanted to squeeze it in because some weeks I forget to do this. Right. Good morning. What do you think I'm trying to get at here? Wild guess is a Pinellas? It is Pinellas. Yes, good for you. Oh, yeah, Punta Pin Punta Pinal means point of pines, and so therefore it's like a pine county. It's Pinellas is go. pine. Okay, whatever. Actually, then there's three counties that begin with P. What did you say? Polk. Pinellas? There's Polk, Pinellas, and um, no, that's a city. Never mind. W what were you thinking? I, my brain went to Palatka, but that's a city. Oh, right, 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 right. right. <laughs> well, who's this? You know, there there is a Tangerine, Florida. Yes, there is a tangerine. city of tangerine, right. Okay. And and uh, who's this? this? Judy. Judy, I thought it was you. Well, you got this $20 <laughs> waiting for you here, okay? Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Judy. That was a good question, really. Yeah, I wasn't so sure so, it was. Yeah. yeah, good. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> I, I like that question. That was a good question. Cause I, and we do have many, many counties or cities in Florida that are named after, yeah. you know, well, for, it's because of Florida. You know, we are, you know, it's flora. You know, I mean, you've got Fruitland Park. Um, yeah. You've yeah, got, yeah. you know, like you say, Tangerine and, and Orange Tangerine County you know? and Citrus County and... Um, Oh, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones, but a lot of them. And there's that there are uh, Pine Grove, you know, that there's they may be just small towns, right, right, right. But they, you know, that we are after. And I guess after, Palm Beach County, right? There's a palm in there, and it's it is after a plant. Yeah, and that's true. Yeah. So different, you know, many many different uh, big Pine Key. You have, you know, but that wouldn't be a county. So no, I'm just saying different right, places right, right, that, right, right. that Florida has, and and I'm sure there's a lot of other states as well that you know you name your cities not just after the people who helped found 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 find those cities, you know, be the founders um, of the you know of that city or that state, but also out of some of the the items a, that come from those areas as well. I have a question. That I apologize. It's not really plant related at all. But the the Silver River right runs into the Withlacoochee River right, which is considered no 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 the Silver River runs into the Ocklawaha River right into into the Ocklawaha okay okay yeah. and and the Rainbow River runs into the Withlacoochee, Withlacoochee River okay right. so neither the Rainbow nor the Silver are considered major rivers in Florida right because they're spring fed. Okay, so the the Withlacoochee is considered a major river, but the Ocklawaha is not because the Ocklawaha feeds, I guess, the uh, St. Johns. 
feeds into the St. John's River. Isn't that crazy that yeah. the Ankawa is not considered a major river? It runs long distance. It, it does, but I think that because that it joins within So if it St. connects John's, to another river, it, it and, loses and its output, status like Pluto? And the output where it comes out at is another is river. Another river. So a river is really only a river. It's a, it's not. It doesn't get the respect. It's it's just it's just another <laughs> creek. <laughs> Even though the Oklawaha has the uh, the locks and everything on there yeah. as well. Yeah. But yeah. It's even a river in uh, in Denali, the, the, the yeah. Lake Russo or something. Lake Russo, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Has a lot. Carolyn, always an interesting show, as always. 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 We have a lot of fun. We're petitioning, by the way, for you to be in the Hall of Fame next year. Oh. <laughs> Did you know we were doing that? Yes, you, yes. last week you started. <laughs> oh, no, we've been doing it all week. <laughs> we've been trying to get your, your fans to get on board with this. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Larry. Oh, always fun. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. We're getting more information about victims of a suicide attack in Istanbul, Turkey. A Turkish official says at least nine of those killed are Germans. Denmark is joining Germany in advising its citizens to avoid public places and crowds in Turkey until further notice. Turkey believes the suicide bomber who carried out the attack in Istanbul's popular Sultan Ahmet district is a 28-year-old Syrian national. Fox Radio's Jessica Gallagher. A search for answers underway after a house explosion 